Hi guys. So in this video I'm going to show how to use the latest version of uh, Magic version 5.9.2 to set up a JWT uh, authentication and authorization server uh, in addition to a frontend that allows you to administer your users and roles. So make sure you download the latest version of uh, Magic, version 5.9.2, then just uh, unzip it, then uh, just get rid of this uh, zip file. And then if you're on Linux or Mac, open a terminal. I'm gonna go to uh, my unzip Magic folder, and I'm gonna use code. Uh, there's absolutely nothing preventing you from using uh, Visual Studio, uh, of course. Uh, the backend uh, is built on top of uh, .NET. So if I now uh, change to my backend folder, see the backend, then I can uh, start it using .NET run. Then I need to start the magic frontend, change to frontend folder. Then I need to do an npm link. This will take some uh, time, but uh, just let it finish. When npm link is done doing its thing, you can type in ng serve. Notice uh, this video uh, assumes you have the .NET CLI Angular, uh, Node, uh, and in addition to a database uh, such as uh, either MySQL or Microsoft SQL Server locally installed on your development machine. When ng serve is done doing its thing, you can start Google Chrome, uh, for instance, and then you can uh, go to localhost colon 4200, where your frontend is being served. Now at this point, whoops, this is how it's gonna look like when you come here, sorry, I was already logged in. Now at this point, uh, you're gonna have to log in with username root and password root, log in. And then you're going to be asked to provide a JWT secret key. Uh, this should be a random piece of text. You don't have to remember it, but it needs to be highly random and impossible to guess, so don't use this what I just provided, please. Uh, then you're going to be asked if you want to use MySQL or Microsoft SQL Server, and uh, you're going to be asked uh, what name you want your authentication and authorization database to have. And then you're going to be asked uh, for your uh, connection string to your database. If you choose Microsoft SQL Server, it's um, MSSQL connection string. If you choose uh, MySQL, it's a MySQL connection string by default. Typically, you only have to change the password. This part here, database in uh, uh, parentheses, must stay exactly as it is. And uh, then you're going to have to provide a, a password for your root user account. Your root user account is really, really important to secure with an extremely difficult to guess password. So don't use five characters. Uh, such as I just did. And then just click uh, save. This saves your configuration in the backend. Then when uh, that process is done, you can go to cruddyfy, then you choose the same database type as you set up the system with, at which point you will have your authentication database automatically created for you here. At this point you can look at uh, the database. Uh, here is the roles table. Uh, then I have a users table. Then I have an association, uh, one to many from users to roles, which you can see here. Then uh, when you want to um, actually get going, you simply choose all tables. Then you can uh, provide a module URL. Typically, you don't want to change anything of the default settings. And then you click Cruddyfy All. And I now have my JWT backend completely done, 14 endpoints. And at this point, I can even go to my endpoints. I can click Show Endpoints. And I can uh, play around with it. Here is, for instance, the uh, 
HTTP REST endpoints that returns the count of the number of roles in the system. Uh, here is the HTTP endpoint that returns every single role. Then I can filter here if I find users, for instance. Then I can find the users get or read HTTP REST endpoint and it will return all users. Note it's, it does not return uh, the password. And in fact, uh, the passwords are cryptographically secured by using uh, Blowfish hashing with uh, individual um, salting. Now, when you're done uh, playing around with it, you can just give your front end app a name, authentication. For instance, you choose template and go default, and then you can apply copyright header, copyright Thomas Hans 2020. Then click generate and you're done. You now have uh, an administrative uh, front end uh, for your uh, JWT server backend. You can unzip that file and uh, then you can open another terminal window. Then you can go to wherever you downloaded it. Oops. Sorry about that. And then you can open up Visual Studio Code again. And now uh, we need to uh, link in uh, NPM. So you type uh, NPM link, which is gonna take some time. Then when npm link is done, we need to serve it. Uh, notice at this point, port 4200 is uh, already busy serving our magic frontend, so you have to choose a different port. I'm gonna choose 4201. You do that by typing ng serve dash dash port 4201. Then when uh, ng serve is uh, finished uh, doing its thing, you can open up uh, in Google Chrome, for instance. So you can open up localhost, call on uh, 4201. And uh, there you can uh, see your front end. Uh, it's actually going to look like this when you come there. Uh, then you're going to have to log in with your root username and password. Only root users are allowed access here by default. And uh, from here, uh, you can go to the off menu item and you can create as many new users as you wish. Foo, bar, bar, okay. And you can associate the user with uh, many roles if you wish. Uh, you can de-associate him with a specific role. You can create new roles. How they associate users with your new roles, etc and so on. So this easily allows you to uh, administer your system's user. And at this point, you actually already have a complete JWT server-side backend, and uh, you also have a front-end to administer your uh, users. And of course, the objective being to potentially use this as a single sign-on type of system for your enterprise development efforts. And in fact, if you go into MySQL Workbench now, uh, if you chose MySQL to be your database, unless you chose uh, SQL Server, then actually we can uh, have a look at uh, the magic underscore of uh, database. And if you look at the users, of course, which obviously is the most important table, you will actually notice that the passwords are cryptographically hashed using Blowfish and individual salting on a per record level. So this is actually extremely secure, assuming you chose a truly random JWT secret as you set up magic. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.